Now, talking about this Brendan Shaw cancellation thing, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, wonder, wonder if this whole Euro cancelling and the fact that he's got no shows after July for the most part until September and the fact that, you know, in general, it seems like he's talking a lot about money more and a lot about downsizing. Just general, there's a comp, I know, I feel like there's like a squeeze going on the industry. And I wonder if this is another indication of the overall squeeze that's affecting a lot of these you know, JRE, Bapperverse, no, yeah, JRE Extended Universe type character people from the LA podcast scene, where it looks like the monies that these guys are all enjoying from their fucking mediocre podcast is now finally dried up. Um, a lot of those pods were fucking awesome, but over the last few years, it's been fucking hellish to get through them, and some of the guys I actually enjoy listening to. So I wonder, I wonder, 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 if this is the case because this this article culture variety is very interesting for me it says the following spotify laying off 200 employees in the in reorganization of the podcast division 200 employees from the podcast division now don't get me wrong a lot of it might be to do with the merge with podcasts and gimlet that they had so a lot of these staff members might be more so gimlet and podcast um employees as opposed to specific spotify podcast employees but it's still an interesting development that we're seeing the same platform that joe rogan you know famously signed for 200 plus million you know was it licensing deal a few years ago is now the same place that seems like they're kind of starting to wind down their podcasting and i think the rumors out there now are that podcast sorry spotify aren't going to re-sign joe rogan um there's a lot of talk about him potentially going back to youtube i've got a feeling that he might even do the twitter thing um that um what's his name tucker carson's doing especially Elon musk has been talking a lot about launching that side of um things in terms of twitter and having it be a place where creators and con sorry, content creators at large can actually post their stuff directly on there so it wouldn't surprise me if joe decides to do that directly especially when you consider the conversations that are happening around the show in the comments and shit that could be a good place to go and do it or you might jump onto a place like rumble um there was talk about the rumble guys having like an open contract there for him to sign or to negotiate with at any point in the hundreds of millions also and i'd imagine someone like a kick might get involved in whoever loads of platforms out there that could get involved in it but the one thing that is is definite spotify aren't going to re-sign joe and i think that's interesting because you would imagine despite spotify's podcast platform side of things being the horrible to use i fucking detest it um it's obviously great to use some music but the video side of it the podcast side of it just the fact that it crashes all the time the fact that you've got fucking pod you know you pay for spot spotify premium and you still get fucking ads on it it's fucking annoying um all of it fucking is horrible to fucking use so i'm sure there's a lot of people out there who have just stopped listening to the joe rogan podcast because it moved to spotify and i'm sure there's still a lot of people on there like myself who only joined spotify because of joe rogan that's a funny thing like much music i listen to i always had a spotify free account and i had most of my main music listening was done on apple music but then when joe joined spotify i then got a premium account on spotify because of that and then i started to use spotify more as a music thing because of joe even though joe was a podcasting but then after listening to the podcast on there for a few times and it kept crashing every time he tried to skip through it i was like you know what i'm out so i'm sure a lot of people have kind of done the same thing so you know i'd imagine the signing of joe I wonder if the Spotify executives look back on it and think, did we overpay for him? Because according to Bert, who is a person you can never tell secrets to, Bert Crasher never tell him a secret because he's gonna spill it's gonna spill it at one point. He said um basically that the deal was like north of three hundred million. It wasn't even the hundred million that was being, you know, leaked to the press. It was a deal worth like three hundred plus million for like what was it, four, five year contract? you know for only the intellectual for the licensing of the of the fucking podcast so after the contract terms are over joe gets his podcast back to put anywhere he wants so it's never like they get to own it or anything which is a fucking crazy you know deal for joe so it makes sense why he took it because the money was like life generation changing but god almighty man this is a really interesting development like uh, what tim dylan was saying was true maybe the podcast bubble is definitely burst like the money these guys are making beforehand is definitely gone and they're now having to essentially rely on putting on fun interesting shows people listen to but now they're all really rich 
they're all really you know they've all gone up they've all a bit older they're all maybe living not very interesting lives so the wacky crazy podcast thing that they were doing beforehand in topics conversations whatnot um they probably got a lot more to lose it's just not going to be the same again so interesting anyway read the article quickly here it's a spotify is undertaking a strategic strategic realignment of his podcast division laying off about 200 staffers i'd hate to get laid off and for it to be you know under the term of a strategic realignment just tell me you sacked me and then let me keep it moving don't sugarcoat any fucking you know stupid hr talk things it says here sarah el 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 Habashi, Spotify's VP, head of podcast business, announced his job cuts in a memo to employees on Monday that she was shared publicly. The 200 employees represent about 2% of the audio streamers' worldwide workforce. The layoffs in the podcast group come from the Spotify's cut 6% of its overall headcount earlier this year and saw the exit of Dan Ostroff, sorry, Dawn Ostroff, chief content advertising business officer who previously headed Spotify's podcast business. To be fair, if you worked at Spotify, and your boss, Dawn Ostroff, got fired, and she was the person responsible for signing fucking Joe Rogan and Joe Budden and a few other people beforehand, I would have left as well, to be fair. Or you should have expected you were going to get fired. You know what I mean? When the head honcho gets fired, then most likely the underlings are going to get fired also. Um, It concludes here, it says, we are expanding our partnership efforts with leading podcasters from Gross, the globe with a tailored approach, optimized for each show creator, El Bashi wrote in a memo, the fundamental pivot from the more uniform proposition will allow us to support creator community better. However, doing so requires adapting. Over the past few months, our senior leadership team has worked closely with HR to determine the optimal organization for the next chapter. As a result, we've made the difficult but necessary decision to make strategic realignment our group and reduce our global podcast vertical and other functions by approximately 200 people. Even if the cuts and stepped up focus of creators, Abashi said Spotify remains committed to original programming. With regular Spotify will merge its podcasts and Gimlet in a renewed Spotify Studios operation. Blah, 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 blah. Last four. Spotify cancelled 11 podcast shows running um, the original lineup, or pre original lineup to weed out the company's determined was unperforming title. So they're getting rid of all the ones that are un- underperforming. So I'm wondering, let, and let me ask you, ask you guys here in the poll here. Um, let me ask you what you guys think here. Because I'm curious what the verdict is around the fucking community. Uh, did, did Spotify overpay for the JRE? I, want, I wonder what you guys think about this. Did they overpay? Because I don't think they personally did. I think it was a bargain, really, to get him on board. Especially being at Big Ears and the numbers he probably commands. I think he brings in a whole lot of people there, a lot of ears, a lot of eyes. It kind of solidifies him reputation-wise. I don't think they're overpaid, but I wonder what you guys think. Like 200 million, allegedly, right? For those years, the deal, according to Bert Kreischer, was 300, but let's say the 100, 200 mark. Did Spotify overpay? What do you guys think? Did they overpay? What are you guys saying here? Actually, yeah. <laughs> I love that, actually, being. That's essentially what everyone fucking clicks. Don't care, actually. Um, yes, they overpaid. People are saying, okay, cool. The census is like, it's not very clear, but it, I think a lot of you guys on here aren't also fans, aren't also the biggest fans of Rogan. I think I might be the only person on this stream listening right now who actually listens to Joe Rogan. I think most of you guys don't give a flying fuck about the guy, which is understandable, fair, but yeah, I still like the show. 